Greetings everyone. Welcome to the Codesultant channel. Our discussion is about the connections of grounding and bonding equipment covered in section 250.8 of the National Electrical Code. Without further ado, let's connect to our topic. Section 250.8A of the code outlines one or more approved methods for connecting equipment grounding conductors, grounding electrode conductors, and bonding jumpers. These permitted methods are as follows. 1. A listed pressure connector. The photo shows examples of the listed pressure connectors, specifically tool crimped connectors. A green twist on connector also falls under this category. This connector incorporates a hole at the top allowing for the insertion of a solid equipment grounding conductor to establish a bond with the wiring device. Further, conventional twist on wire connectors, commonly employed for splicing equipment grounding conductors, are also included within this category. It is important to note that these connectors do not necessarily need to be listed for grounding and bonding purposes. The use of listed pressure connectors, regardless of their color, excluding the green ones with hole at the top, is permitted for the connection of grounding and bonding conductors. The second item on the list is the terminal bar. Terminal bars are frequently found in panels, switchboards, and motor control centers. They are typically included by equipment manufacturers to facilitate the convenient connection of multiple conductors at a single location. Additionally, there are wall-mounted grounding bars available, which enable the quick and easy connection of multiple ground points. These grounding bars serve as a centralized bond for both the communication system and the grounding system of a building. Moving on to the third item, pressure connectors listed as grounding and bonding equipment. These connectors are explicitly designated for grounding and bonding applications and should not be used for other purposes unless stated otherwise. Examples of their various applications include ground rod clamps, water pipe clamps, and metal structural frames in building connections. These examples are illustrated in photos taken from the Burndy Products Handbook. Fourth on the list is the exothermic welding process. Exothermic welding, also referred to as exothermic bonding or thermite welding, is a technique utilized to establish a durable and continuous electrical connection between multiple metal conductors. This method is commonly employed for connecting stranded copper conductors to reinforcing bars and ground rod connections, etc. Number 5 on the list pertains to machine screw type fasteners that engage in at least two threads or are secured with a nut. Similarly, number 6 refers to thread forming machine screws that engage in at least two threads within the enclosure. Thread forming machine screws offer the advantage of providing a more secure and reliable connection, particularly in certain materials. These screws create threads that are specifically designed to match the screw, resulting in improved resistance to loosening, enhanced pull-out strength, and a reduced risk of stripping or damaging the material. It's important to note that this section does not permit the use of any other type of screw for the connection of grounding and bonding conductors or terminals. For number 7 on the list, connections that are part of a listed assembly. According to the code, equipment equipped with grounding terminals or connectors is deemed acceptable as long as it adheres to specific standards and holds proper certification. Lastly, for number 8, which refers to other listed means. This allows for the consideration of alternative approaches as long as they are officially listed. In other words, if a particular method or approach is included in the list of approved options, it can be utilized for the connection of grounding and bonding equipment. This provision offers flexibility in selecting suitable methods, provided they meet the specified listing requirements. Regarding the not permitted methods, Section 250.8b of the code explicitly states that connection devices or fittings that rely solely on solder are prohibited. The code prohibits the use of solder as a primary means of connection due to its lower melting point, which can pose a risk in the event of a ground fault. Therefore, soldering alone is not considered an acceptable method for grounding and bonding connection. Overall, the code permits various approved methods for connecting grounding and bonding equipment, emphasizing the use of listed connectors except for the exothermic method, strength, and proper plating, in addition to that, the capacity to carry ground fault current, and compatibility with the system's metals. Additionally, according to section 250.12, non-conductive coatings such as paint, lacquer, and enamel on equipment that need to be grounded must have these coatings removed from threads and other contact surfaces. The purpose of this requirement is to ensure effective electrical continuity, Alternatively, fittings can be used that are specifically designed to eliminate the need for removing such coatings, thereby maintaining a reliable connection. 
Thank you all for watching.